How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Learning RPG Maker MV. In this quick tutorial, we're going to go over how to make a piano mini game using free assets online. I'm going to put a link in the description. You can use any assets you want. You can even create your own assets. And a little bit later, I'm going to show you how to make your own assets with even a very terrible quality microphone. Here's an example of the project of the mini game. We're going to go up to the piano and press enter. It's going to ask if we want to play it. It's going to show the player the buttons that the player needs to press in order to play those keys that correlate to those buttons. The player can press escape to cancel out of the menu. If they say no, then the player will do a move event and walk down. But if they say yes, then the player will be locked in a little menu. They can't move up and down. Even though it's not an auto run process, the player is blocked in with invisible events that are being toggled with the switch. And the player's direction is fixed, so even though I press down, the player is always going to be facing the piano. So the player can press up, down, left, and right. They're blocked in by these invisible blocks that are being toggled with a switch. And the player can press any keys on the keyboard that you specify using Yanfly's button common events plugin to make the buttons play piano notes. So we're basically calling a button common event that plays a sound effect when the player presses a button if they're in the right menu. So, so we can, I'm going to go through and play all of them. So they can play on top of each other, but they're basically still on a um, very limited number of channels, so you can't like hit. Hitting two at the same time is kind of hard doesn't always work, you'll have to delay them a little bit. <laughs> but it's a little mini game for the player to play around with and uh and they have a full octave so that they can do almost any melodies that they want with the entire octave and an additional one note at the top. So 13 tones. I'm going to include a, a Google Drive link in the description below to where you can download all of the audio files that I've created for this. But if you want to create your own audio files, say using your voice or something, you could do that too and it's very easy. Just download Audacity and record anything that has any sort of tone. As long as it's not a, a percussion sound effect, it'll work. And let's make an example of that. So I'm gonna load up Audacity, and I'm gonna create, let's close all these, no. And let's create a new file, and I'm just gonna record myself making a, a note, a tone. Uh, and I've got this tone. And if we double click it, we can normalize the audio just to get it at a nice loud enough volume level. Now what we can do is click on the effects after double clicking and selecting everything and going into change pitch. Now this will usually auto detect what pitch you're using so apparently this was an A sharp or B flat. Um, and what we're going to do is export this but then we're going to change the pitch. So this is detected as an A sharp B flat. So we can either number all of our files as 1 through 13 or we can call them the the pitch that is recognized. So what I'm going to do is do both of them. So before I do a, a pitch shift, I'm going to export this audio and we're going to call this whatever you want to call it. it. Use some sort of naming convention or you can do either or. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a B flat. You can start on any note you want and just keep going half a step higher until you get where you want. So we'll save this and say OK and then what we'll do is we'll apply an effect over it. We'll do the change pitch. So now we're going to turn this A sharp or B flat into a B by raising it by one step. So you just press up and down on this to change the pitch. So we're raising it half a step. So we'll say OK. And this is going to shorten it because it's a higher frequency now. And we press play. So now it becomes a B. We're going to do the same thing and export this, except we're going to call it singing note B or singing note 2 which will be a B. Singing note to regular B. We repeat this process and we're going to do this 13 times and I'm going to fast forward for you.
And here we are back to changing the A to an, an A sharp or B flat. So this is a full octave now. And we're going to export this. Last audio. As our singing note 13, which is closing off the full octave, B flat. That's all we have to do if we want to create our own assets in Audacity, but I also included these in a download link in the description if you want to skip the audio rendering. So let's take a look at how you handle this inside the RPG Maker MB Engine. The first thing we're going to do is install Yanfly's button common events plugin if you're not already using it, and allocate which keys we want to assign to 13 buttons. You probably want to pick a row of keys that are all in the same area so that the player can go up and down them and kind of be very, it's very intuitive, right? You may even want to go like, uh, what, like different two sets of keys, two rows of keys if you want it to feel a little bit more like a piano, but it's really up to you and however you want to design it. I've gone with the A to L and then all of uh, the semicolon, single quotation, the bracket and the backslash as well to use the row of 13 keys and I've set them right here so what we're going to do is figure out where uh, we get this plugin installed and then we need to make common events that play sound effects so we're going to come back in here and assign these to the common events that we make so let's make common events so we're going to make 13 common events or more less or more depending on whatever you want to do in your game and we'll call it something simple so we know and put it next to each other. So I'm calling it Piano Mini Game. And then I'm putting the, the letter of the note that I'm singing. But you could also just put in a number here, and the first note, second note, third note, and just put them half a step apart and you can get everything in the chromatic scale. So what you do here is you're going to assign one switch for the entire event. So we'll create a new conditional statement, conditional branch, and we'll select the switch and we'll call it Piano Mini Game or whatever you want and we'll see if that's on. We'll do a conditional branch that's saying if this switch is on then allow something to happen, do something. So it doesn't need any trigger or anything, we're going to just play a sound effect. So in this case we were playing the piano but let's replace this piano with the sound that we just made. It's not going to sound as good as a piano but at the beginning of the video you can listen to the piano sounds. What we're going to do here is take the 13th notes from B flat all the way up to B flat again. So this is sort of a different key. We're going to use the numbers instead of the the letters here. So this is singing note 1, B flat, and I'm going to say 1. And then I'll go to the next one. This can be 2. If you don't want to use the uh, letters, you can use numbers, you know half step intervals, it works the same. So we'll change this to singing note 2. And we'll change this to singing note 3. And you do the same thing, once you've created it once you can copy paste the entire event and if piano minigame is on then play this sound effect when this common event is called. So this is going to be singing note 4. And I'll fast forward this part for you. So now we have a different key. We went from from A to another A. So it's an A minor scale, also it could be C major. And then we went, we changed that to starting on a B flat, so we're going with a B flat minor. Let's take a look at the event now, or listen to the event now that we've included our own sound effects, custom sound effects, and we'll test it out. <laughs> Much different, right? <laughs> uh, fantastic. So you can make all kinds of weird 
very, very weird piano-like things with this sort of process. Here's the events itself. So we've made our um, we've made our common events, and we've bound them to the buttons we want to use inside the button common event menu. So we've decided I'm going to use this row, so I'm binding this to 25 and 26, uh, all the way down to 35, and then for the other keys 36, 37 to give me 13 notes. So we've done that. We've done the common events. We've done the plugins. Here's the events. We're actually locking the player in place. So the three outlining events right here. Let me zoom in for you. These are just blocker events. They do absolutely nothing. All they do is have a priority of same as characters, and the switch is piano minigame on. So if the switch is on, it's stopping the player from walking away. And to the left of it, to the right of it, and below it, it's all the same copy-pasted event, blank contents. It has just a switch that says if the, the switch is on, you know, create a priority same as character to stop the player from moving around. So the player is going to be standing here, and these three events are going to block the player from moving away. But how do we stop the player from, like, facing down or facing left? Well, we're going to do a fixed direction. So let's look at the main event. Very simple event. We show a text. You could also show a picture or any other way that you want to let the player know what buttons they press to leave the menu, what buttons they press to play the piano, etc. And I'm using word wrap, so that's why you see these, these line breaks in here. And these are, the, these are the buttons that the player is pressing, and these are the notes that it's playing. Well, this is wrong now because I'm using a B-flat scale instead of an A minor scale. But um, I'm going to switch it back to the piano one. This was just for example. So you let the player know. You don't actually have to let them know what notes they are if you don't want to include that. That's fine. But then you ask the player, do, they, do you want to play the piano? And you just do a show choices. If the player says yes, then you're going to do a movement route that turns the player up so that they face the piano, unless you have a side-facing piano. Most of them I've seen have been up-facing. And you do a direction fix, which is right here. And you just wait for completion. And then you're going to turn on a switch, the piano minigame switch, the one that is checking in the common event, the one that the blockers uh, events are using, uh, all of that. So this is the switch that happens. If they say no, then you set a movement event so that the player just walks down and leaves. So skip you cannot move. Then we're going to create a new a new page and this page is also very simple. It has a condition that says piano mini game and if the switch is on then we're going to do one thing. We're going to check to see if the player is pressing the cancel button to get them out of the menu so they're not locked in the piano. Play the piano, you're stuck forever, but we don't want that. So this time if the player presses the cancel button at any time, so we do a conditional branch on page four, you click on button and select cancel. If the player presses the cancel button at any time, then you're going to turn off the directional fix, otherwise they're going to press down and be facing up and be moving to the right but still be facing up. So you turn off the directional fix and you turn off the switch piano minigame, which will put it back on this page and it will get rid of these little blockers. And it'll stop the button comment event from firing comment events when the player presses the button from just like randomly walking around the world. But that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like the video. That really helps. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I really appreciate that sub. And if you would like to support what I do, please consider backing me on patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming. That's patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming. Even a $3 level, a very, very small amount a month is very appreciated. I love you guys very much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to stay awesome. Be sure to catch the live streams 10 a.m. to noon every Monday through Friday, most of the time. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.